we were also discussing the tendency that you have seen across a whole bunch of figures in the guru sphere, especially the ones that cultivate a more conservative audience, that they often turn out to, surprise, surprise, have developed a new appreciation for Christian values and religion, right? Now, mm. yes, their audience also tend to be more religious and find these things valuable, but that's just a coincidence, Matt. It's really that they've done the intellectual work to, you know, consider the issue more thoroughly. So you see this in Huberman has come out discussing his religiosity. He's not perhaps one of the worst offenders, but Russell Brand more recently discovering Christ and the Bible as very valuable sources, you know. I need a personal relationship with God. He always had an interest in mysticism and various Eastern traditions and whatnot, but suddenly Christianity, good old Christianity, it's become... Appealing. Yeah, more appealing. He, he may have overlooked some of the important insights there. So that as Christ died on the cross, he might be reborn in us. And Constantine Kisson also, you know, he hasn't gone full bore of embracing Christianity, but he has come out at least on his substack and what declaring his lack of faith in new atheism, right? And his growing appreciation for the importance of religiosity. Maybe he was too quick to dismiss <laughs> the importance of religion. Who's, you know, dear Ruben as well. Who was the original cultural Christian? Who was the, that? The strange death of Europe, that guy. Oh, Douglas Murray. Yes, Douglas Murray. We heard him talk with Jordan Peterson and Jonathan Pichot about like, how much he he really wants to be capable of being religious. But he, the unfortunate thing is like, you know, he isn't willing to take the last step because he can't really make himself believe. But he, he really strongly recognizes the importance and beauty of Christianity. So yes, this is a common theme. And if you remember, Matt, we heard the sense makers, Jordan Hall, and Daniel Schmachtenberger and whatnot. In SenseMaker content, you often hear them talking about the importance of mm. masks, of yeah. rituals, of, you know, saying yeah. grace before meals, yeah. right? They don't want to do it religion in the traditional way, mm. but they recognize the kind of deeper metaphorical meaning behind this is normal a, this religious This is a really thing. important point, one that you've made before, which is that even Jordan Peterson is not by any standards like a normal Christian. Like a normal Christian that goes to church, you know, that's basically it. No, they're weird metaphorical, cultural <laughs> Christians. Like this is like a postmodern like version. Like it's, it's like paleo Christianity or something. It's a bit like Christian hipsterism. They don't want, they're into Christianity, but not in the way that you are, right? <laughs> they're in the, because it's, it, they've got the deeper meaning, the evolutionary meaning, which is there, the symbolic and metaphorical interpretation. And I heard recently on trigonometry, an echo of this sentiment. So they were talking to Alex O'Connor, the philosopher slash uh, online atheist. And there was this segment. So listen to this. I say you were just sort of pretending to be a Christian. You're just acting like a Christian. And suddenly there's a, there's a political invasion. A different religion sort of is taking over the country. And they come to you. They hold a gun to your head. And they say, say that Jesus is not God or I'll shoot you. In that moment, you're not going to pretend to be a Christian for the social utility. You're just going to throw it out immediately. Yeah, but that's right? not what people mean when they say act like you're a Christian. I don't think going to church is actually what they mean either. What they mean... So, for example, we hear every time we have a meal here at the studio, we say grace, mm. right? No, I don't think anyone here is religious. Well, no one who eats here mm. is religious. Um, the woman editing this is religious, mm. so she's <laughs> upset with all three of us. Mm. Now... Um, so what I think they mean is there are certain practices uh, around religion that will make your life better. Yes. And I think that's definitely true. Uh, the the constant practicing of gratitude, the appreciation of the fact that you're not the center of the universe, the connection with the transcendent or the divine, the the recognition that other people are as equal and equally important in the world as you are, uh, the serving of others, all of these things are practices that most religions have developed in one way or another that a secular person is unlikely to, to get themselves into because they're not natural to human beings. It's not natural to put other people ahead of yourself. It's not natural um, to practice gratitude. Most people 
particularly in our society, don't, right? So I think what people mean when they say act as if you are religious is adopt some of the the kind of the best things about religion. And it is an interim answer, by the way, because you mentioned children. Once you have children, it becomes very difficult. It's hard to explain to a five-year-old why they should do something without you know, the bearded man mm -hmm. in the sky, which yes. I know religious people will get upset with me about because it's an unfair character, but I use it exactly for that purpose. Yeah. Uh, not, not to mention talking about things like death. So there might, you have, like we talked about, the kind of Christian hipsterism, right? But the image of a whole bunch of non-religious people being forced to have to work, is to say, grace before meals because you think, you know, the ritual of gratitude is important. Like... It's so ridiculous. It's it's so ridiculous. As somebody who grew up in a religious household, right? And we didn't say grace before meals, right? But according to Constantine, I should have received all these values, right? You know, about of putting other people's first and, and being kind and so on. He says they don't come naturally. Yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. Like almost all cultures have these values about be kind to people. Don't be rude. Don't be an <laughs> arsehole, right? Like, and I know that Jordan Peterson and others like to categorize these as simply impossible to develop without monotheistic religious systems. But I question that you need to say, be nice to people because there is a God in heaven who will get you. Like Constantine invokes that he, you know, uses the concept of God with his children. I have children. But older than Constantine, I didn't require to, you know, threaten them of God's existence in order to get them to do things like, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I don't want to, don't want to get into the old atheism versus religion debate. But like, I had these conversations with a friend of mine, a conservative, socially conservative Iranian guy, a colleague of mine, lovely guy. We had a lot in common, but we differed very strongly, and he was similar to these sort of cultural Christians in that he didn't have strong religious beliefs in Islam, but um, he felt very strongly that it was necessary for people to abide by the rules and so on that are proposed. And and we, like I had these arguments with him like 25 years ago, which I felt like I was living proof. Like, like he, he liked me a lot. Um, just like I liked him, he knew that I was a decent guy. Like you, Chris, I've I've raised three children and they're all done extraordinarily well, I have to say. And never once has any kind of religion or religious idea needed to impinge either on my brain or their little brains. So um, it's just it's just clearly wrong. But my, my point is is that it is something that social conservatives like to hearken to that the need for like religiously inspired set of social rules and moral guidelines and the the truth just the absolute truth is no you don't you don't need them to be coming from some ancient scripture from outside they come from they come from inside people and every humanist knows this well the other aspect of it matt is that my my particular field of research, right, is in the cognitive science of religion and there there's a lot of focus on the evolutionary role of religion in establishing like greater cooperative groups. We, we've talked before about the concepts of morally concerned high gods and supernatural punishment and all these kind of things, right, that may very well have played important roles in generating cooperative impulses outside of the king group. But what people like Peterson and definitely Constantine, because he doesn't know any of this topic except through secondhand exposure, is that in almost all cases, when you include controls that make reference to secular sources of authority, like courts or legal sources or whatever the case might be, so you you know you have one condition where you're making appeals to religious authorities and gods and you know supernatural punishment, and in another you make uh, reference to legal systems and moral systems and fairness and courts and that kind of thing, you almost always produce similar effects. And there are plenty of societies which are highly secularized, which appear to be getting by just fine, right? The Scandinavian countries and, that, and people like Douglas Murray and Jordan Peterson would want to argue that that is all because of the history of Christianity, which is still there, right? Even if 
they the societies themselves are not now engaged in the religious rituals or don't have the people signing off, you know, in the actual belief. But that basically ends up being an unfalsifiable hypothesis. It doesn't matter how secularized your society is, how many people in your society affirm that they're non-religious, right? Ultimately, anything good they do is tied to the mm -hmm. historical contingency of religion. It's unfalsifiable. I'm actually open and fairly convinced by the idea about religion having social utility, especially historically. But they kind of take that fact and then extrapolate it to the only way that you can get people to be nice and considerate of others in the contemporary world is to constantly evoke religious symbolism and religious justification and, you know, read the Bible and so on. And it's just not true. We've run that experiment in secular societies and mm. we know that they do continue to function as religiosity declines. Yeah, yeah like you, Chris, I, I definitely recognize the the really important cultural role that religions have have had historically across the world. And it goes hand in hand with with other sort of forms of, of cultural development, which could be political, they could have social aspects and all kinds of norms and things like that. And, and religion is part of the mix. And I think it's it's almost impossible to disentangle the stuff that might be coming from the bit of that culture that you label the religious bit versus the other bits. Because like these sense makers and free thinkers often say, it's different from actually the metaphysical belief, you know, like literally believing in, in a God, right? When you take out those metaphysical beliefs and you just talk about the, the rest of religion, which is, it is like a formalization of the mores and mores of a civilization or a culture. And you know, there can be mutual influences back and forth. But in the current discourse, all it functions as is basically a reactionary talking point, which is let's get back to old fashioned, traditional yeah. family values. These are the rules. And this is what makes you a good person, not like these godless, liberal, atheist types where who will do anything, who believe in nothing and are actually desperately searching for meaning. And as a result, they're going to become trans or something like that's the only role <laughs> that this that this meme plays now yeah there's like a kind of fetishization of religiosity right and like i was raised catholic i went to mass every week for you know 18 years of my life i don't mind going to mass it's fine <laughs> you know and i i recognize that for plenty of people you know they get a lot of benefits from being religious and believing in god or gods but in the heterodox sphere, it is that religious hipsterism, right? Like the boring kind of just going to mass and, you know, not really caring that much about religion in your every moment, you know, not discussing the theology and, and the importance for civilization of religion and whatnot. That's not interesting to them, right? And yet that is what religion religion is for most people, right? It is it is a portion of their lives or a cultural component of their lives, but it is not this hyper-intellectualized, metaphorical, absorbing thing. So yeah, it's like a kind of, I don't know. I don't know how to put it. Maybe the way to say it is like, they have a particularly Protestant approach to these things while at the same time extolling the ritualized aspect of it. Yeah. I mean, you could be overthinking it because on the other hand, counterpoint, but I don't think any of them really believe any of this shit, right? Like Huberman, for instance, right? Proclaiming that he's, you know, getting into God now and religion. Do you think he's thinking about God while... No, I wouldn't. You know. I think in a way, yes, I would with Huberman in particular, because I think that there is a certain proclivity amongst people who are theologically and you could say spiritually or alternative medicine inclined that they they have a esoteric perception of the world. So Huberman seeing that science points to some greater plan or some cosmic organization to the universe, that doesn't surprise me. John Vervaki, you know, being not religious, but constantly feeling the impulse of religiosity and, you know, the, the resonance of religious talking points and whatnot, it doesn't surprise me. I think that's genuine. On the other hand, Michaela Peterson, Jordan Peterson's daughter, released a note on Instagram saying, hey guys, apologies for the lack of podcasts. They will be back. 
I've had the most mind-blowing few weeks and finally feel Jesus and need to reevaluate my priorities a bit. Talk soon, heart. And maybe, like her mom has converted to Catholicism and is like very into that. So maybe that's all genuine, but a lot of that feels very superficial, audience-driven, Russell Brand's engagement. So I think it's a case-by-case basis. I think in some respects, there are people who are just religiously inclined people. And in other cases, there is the audience dynamics at play. Well, I'll just say, I think it's coincidental that um, like in the, in, the, in the current climate where increasingly more and more people are becoming less religious, both in the United States and in other places like Australia, where people are already extremely irreligious, that it just happens to be that an awful lot of contrarian, heterodox, free thinker, influencer types all seem to be migrating towards <laughs> Christianity. I don't think it's a coincidence. Well, no, it's not a coincidence. But what you just described, though, though, Matt, uh, I mean, I don't think this is a fair explanation, but you just pointed out the general trend is away from religion and the heterodox contrarians then go towards <laughs> That's religion, true. right? Like, But I, I think it is more that the heterodox audience is religiously inclined and conservative that's, people are religiously yeah, inclined that's what i I'm think saying. that's doing more than the contrarian impulse and i know well, that, i know that is, that's what that you're be, saying it, that's what i was saying which is that they portray themselves as contrarian heterodox free thinkers but weirdly enough they all seem to basically arrive at the same point which is pretty standard socially conservative <laughs> reactionary religious apologetic yeah like you know it all just fits yeah we can all blame jordan peterson for that so that was just something that i thought was worth noting that you know you will see crop up night again from the guru sphere you even saw noted the atheist james Lindsay at one point talking about you know his cultural christian sensibilities though he since ended up like feuding with the evangelical religious people. So, you know, there's always these countervailing forces. You got to appeal to your new friends, but you're also an obnoxious, you know, new atheist prick. So you've, <laughs> you've got to, you know, which which one wins out? It depends. For each guru, it will be dependent. But the Via Rubin pathway from, you know, liberal, new atheist inclined, Sam Harris fan to the Jordan Peterson, actually, religion is very important, and maybe I was too hasty as my audience becomes more conservative, is uh, a very well-trodden path. That's what we're saying. Indeed, indeed.